Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy, and in this tutorial I would like to show you how to create endless jumping game, something like Doodle Jump. You can make it for PC or for mobile, it's up to you. Let me show you how it looks like in the game. You can jump from one wall to another. Somewhere here you hopefully can see in how it looks on the mobile phone. You can use gyroscope to control it, etc, etc. And right now I can't really see any obstacles, but usually it will spawn here. Also some springs that will let you jump higher, and here we have one also some enemies but uh, their probability of spawn is quite low so we won't see them now it seems well let's not waste your time and get to it yeah you can also die in this game all right let's get started i will create a new project and it will be in 4.26.2 version but it doesn't really matter this should work with any new version of unreal engine so let's launch it we are making a game and we are going to use side scroller character in 3d which means this one let's click on next and we are making it for mobile so let's switch graphics to scalable 3d and 2d and we don't want any starter content uh, leave it in blueprints and let's call it doodle jump doodle jump all right time to create a project if you are making it for very low cost devices which means that you want to save every single piece of performance that you can then i would recommend you to start in project setting and find here a renderer and what you can do is to enable forward shading it will use forward rendering because right now we are using defender rendering which uh, which looks much better and it's generally better in almost everything but it's much more performance heavy so if you are making it for really low cost devices forward shading is way to go you, you would usually use it with vr but to be honest i don't think you really need it i personally will, i'm not gonna do it any middle class phone will be able to handle this without a problem so that's it and you also will probably want to and uh, set up your setting for android and ios which if you if you are going to publish your game you also have to set up everything here which means configure it right here and now you can find plenty of videos on the internet i'm not going into there now because right here we are just going to focus on how to make doodle jump so if you click on play as i just did you can see that we have here some basic controller i can move left right jump etc etc that's cool but i kind of don't want it to be in this landscape mode as you can see here so what i will do is to go into add uh, project setting let's start with project setting and you have to click on android or ios but that is the same setting in ios and you have to find your orientation and switch sensor landscape to portrait portrait is basically this setting this landscape this is portrait cool so let's close that and now you also have to enable it for your preview so for that let's go into editor preferences for real this time and see here you should have here play and click on this little icon which you can see right here is in landscape mode if i click on it it will switch to uh, portrait now so now if you click on play nothing happens because you're using this viewport but if you click on this little arrow and enable new editor window it should work just fine yes you can see it looks pretty cool it's always good to do this on the start of the project because you know what kind of resolution and what kind of orientation you are making your game for so now when we have everything set up let's try to create these walls that you can jump from and you can see that main problem in doodle jump if you go from the lower part of the screen basically jumping up you can fast jump through that which you can't really do here so we will want to set it up and that if our player is jumping out it will go through these desks or walls let's call it walls for now and if he is falling on that from uh, from up to down basically he will jump from it let's start by creating a blueprint for it so let's go into uh, so in content let's go into side scroll pp and blueprints right click here and we will want to create blueprint class actor and let's call it ball underscore bp let's open that and let's start by adding here a cube that's cool and the other thing is we want to add here a well, actually we don't even need collision now that i'm thinking about it let's leave here just a cube and change and change its dimensions a bit let's make it wider and maybe a bit lower on z-axis so now if you put it on the game or to the game it should look something like this but i actually want to rotate it and rotating it would be kind of a pain so let's scroll up here and change this axis i want to have 2.5 on y-axis and one on x-axis and let's even lower our z to 0.2 so now it should look like this but i of course still can't go through that so we will set it set it now and what we will do is to scroll down here 
and use our collisions right here we have collisions preset and with setting these collisions preset you can basically use any object as collision trigger so we will do that and set it to overlap all well we can just set it to overlap dynamics but it doesn't matter let's set it to overlap all and now i should be able to jump through that exactly that's cool so next thing is we need to figure out how to let it know that player is either falling or jumping and we want it to fork and jump him up let's say on in case that he's falling and there is very simple solution to that so let's click here on right on component begin overlap and first of all you want to cast to side scroller character side scroller character right here which is exactly the spawn you can find him here and connect our other actor and what you want to do is to get velocity so let's get velocity Come on. and the only velocity you will want is our z because z is basically how much he's moving on up and down axis so first of all let's actually demonstrate it in the game we will use event kick and connect it right here and let's print that so print string and connect our z value right here on the left side so now once I trigger that by jumping through that, you can see that every time he is jumping up, he has these values in plus. But every time he is jumping down or falling, these values are in minus, which makes sense. Right? It's velocity either against gravity up or to the gravity or together with gravity, whatever it is called. But that's exactly what we will use. Because in the right here, we can create simple check that will see if that number of velocity is lower than zero or higher than zero. Uh, so let's do exactly that. If you want to quickly delete this line, you can press Alt on your keyboard and left click. All right, so from here, let's put here branch. And as our condition, we will use float and we want float bigger than float so to do let's do this one and we want to have uh, no the other way around let's do smaller so float bigger than float and we want to have this thing bigger than zero if it is bigger than zero that means it's true and he should be jumping up and just to quickly check it let's do here two print strings one will be for jumping and the other one for falling and let's see if it works so right now if i just jump, jump there you can see that he's jumping and if i let him really fall through there he recognizes that it is falling which is very important because if he is jumping we don't want to do anything we really want him to go through that but if he is actually falling on that we want to use that and let him launch to the air and basically jump again so what we will do on our jumping uh, let's use launch character so we will s side scroll character take it here and use a launch character yeah. and it's probably a good idea to have it on the same value as you have your jump because you will use jump on the start of the game but we will you can worry about it later just to quickly check it you can click on your side scroll character go into character movement and somewhere here you can see jump z velocity is thousand let's put let's put it on how uh something higher let's do uh 120 uh 1200 and set our z velocity to same thing and i think that we have to actually enable z override let's see all right let's delete all these all of these and move it here just put here a few of them to test how well it all works and i did something really stupid right yeah i actually put it into wrong branch i set it into jumping so it was launching him every time i jumped there i want to put it under falling sorry my bad again alt click left click to delete that let's try it now so i can jump and if i fall on that again it lets him jump and i have to enable where was it okay that's side scroll character i want to go into wall bp and enable override c velocity let's jump and look at that it's letting him jump yeah that looks pretty good uh, what i want to do now is of course to play animation somewhere here because as you could have seen he was just always in the same stacked animation because he never really uh, fallen down so what we will do here is to play animation from our character so let's play animation and that animation will be jumping i think it's something like that third person jump should be here jump and jump start 
Connect it here and definitely don't want to loop it. Let's click on play. Ah, oh, that looks cool. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. That's very, very cool. I would probably increase how much he's jumping. I think it will be more realistic. So, doo -doo -doo, let's go in character movement and set it. Uh, jump Z velocity. Let's try 100. Uh, 1800 and the same thing of course for our wall BP oh that's way too much but I think that it can actually look good you can change it to whatever you want all right let's also set up here that we can control our character with a gyroscope which means if you have your phone you can like move out left and right and let him move like and let him move like that probably not gonna use it with computer but still it will look pretty cool. So you can simply do that by going into side scroll character and right here you already have movement input. So we will have to rework it a little bit. So let's get player controller right here. And from there we want to get motion state, get input motion state and we will work with rotation rate. And you have to use Z axis right here and also multiply it by something so let's set it to multiply float by float and i would do 100 but right here i am not going to test it with my phone well, i will do it on the end just to make sure everything works but you are probably much better off if you have your phone connected this whole time and always launch it and test what works best for you so uh, right now what i will do is to add here event tick because you want to do it constantly and uh, i will actually then connect it back as it was but just to let you know you will have to need it connected like this you will connect event tick and then uh, to our scale value connect this thing which basically means how much you have rotated on z-axis and how much your phone have rotated and it also has to be minus 100 but it wouldn't work right now and i wouldn't be able to move my character if i did that so I will just leave it connected uh, as I had it before. But if you are going to use gyroscope right now, you of course have to connect it as I did right here. I will move it here. Let's do, do, do. let's move it right here and comment it as gyroscope. And of course, don't forget to always save everything. So just shortcut Control S. But if you are not sure, click on Save All and Save Selected. Don't be sure, absolutely sure that everything is saved. You will need it. Trust me. So now let's create some endless generating map or just a space that you can jump in. Well, for that we will start by deleting all these walls because we will use them inside another blueprint. So let's right click and create a blueprint and call it uh, let's let it be actor and let's set it to map underscore bp let's open that and first thing i want to do is to kind of set it so you see where everything is so let's add here a few arrows uh first one and second one something like that and let's set them on y axis to 400 and minus 400 minus 400 because right now if we put them in the game you can sort of see how it will look like on your screen you are right now i'm just checking where do i want to have my pieces of the map and i can't of course see them in the game because i have to take a click on all of these arrows and enable here a hidden end game which means disabling it so click on play and you can see that it works pretty well Maybe I would move it to something like uh, 450 and minus 450. Let's see. Oh, I think that something like that will work quite well. So now what I want to do is in our map, let's add here child actor, which child actor is basically one blueprint inside another blueprint. So we can use our walls here. So let's put here child blueprint child actor i'm sorry not child blueprint and set it right here in child actor component to our uh, wall i believe yep it's wonderful i always created those names and then forgot how it is actually called and let's put here three of them Control c Control v move it up a bit let's say to 300 and again to 300 so to 600 basically 
So right now, if you click on play, you can see that we have it here. Wonderful. And you could also see that he jumped through all of them and uh, jumped and was launched on the, from the highest one, which is exactly what we want. Let's put it here. And now that I'm thinking about it, we will use only two. Because we have jumped so high. Yeah, something like that. That's cool. Uh, but it would be incredibly boring if it was always on one place, as you are very, as I'm very sure you are aware. We have already used these arrows as indications where it will be. So what we basically want is to have this wall in somewhere on location between these arrows. And that's very simple to set up. So we will go into construction script. By the way, the difference between construction script and event graph is that event graph is happening anytime in the game and construction script happens even before this uh, blueprint is actually spawned. So it's uh, so construction script is perfect for what I'm going to do. Take your child actor and we will want to set a relative location right here and click on click on your location, split structure pin, then take your child actor and get relative location. Because what you want is to to do again again right click split structure pin and as we said we want to move it only on this green y-axis so let's connect x and z or we can of course set up here z to be moved uh, between some in between in some range etc it's right up to you let's connect it here and on your location y you want to put here a random float in range and as we know that range is these arrows which means far, uh, 450 and minus 450 which means about 900 different options where it can move. So let's set it to minus 450 to 450. And you of course want to do the same thing for your child actor 2. So let's control C, control V. And connect it right here. And you can simply take your child actor 2 and put it right here. Oh, come on. Not like that. Can't click on the text. You have to click somewhere here. Wonderful. And let's look at viewport. See what it does. And you can see that it's moving. Congratulations, guys. Our walls are dancing. So now what we, of course, want to do is to spawn this blueprint every time player goes through this blueprint. And again, very simple to do. Let's go into viewport, compile, and you will simply have to add here some new collision. So let's add here box collision. Let's put it a bit under our wall and scale it up, of course. We want to make sure that our player goes through that. And what you want to do is, I would probably put here another arrow, but you can of course, uh, no, you can't, you have to do, uh, you have to use another arrow. But let's rename this one and call it next map location. And you know that you have your child actor on about 600, so let's put it a bit higher. I would go with 700, something like that. Uh, you need, to, no, maybe, you know what, let's do 850 because you can see that our child actor one is very close to the start of this we don't want to spawn these two too close to each other so maybe i would move this one a bit down something like that or you can play with a uh, velocity of jump how much you can jump and launch or be launch uh, your player uh, you have to set it up this is more these are more of the game design decisions which you have to do specifically for your game so let's close that and doo -doo -doo, and i of course have to set it so edit map let's go back and click on our box and let's actually call it next map call as collision scroll down we have here on component begin overlap so let's ca cast to side scroller character Right here, other actor, and now you have to create uh, actor from class, yes. And of course, it should be same blueprint as this one, which means map BP. All right, and now let's take our next map location, get tran get world transform, do, do and connect it right here. So let's save everything. That's the first step, and then test if everything works. So. So I'll jump through that and see how much I can. Uh, seems pretty well to me. And there seems to be some problem. Uh, it looks like I'm jumping through that few times, which shouldn't happen. That's very bad. Let's put here two ones. I've noticed that it it's happens quite often when we are trying to create endless corridor. I'm not quite sure where the problem is, but it seems like we're overlapping it several times. Uh, do once node should fix the problems like this let's try that let's jump here 
all right seems like it works but now let's do something with that camera because as you can see you can move together with the camera which is something i definitely don't want so let's close that and create here new blueprint which will be camera so blueprint actor camera underscore pp and you want to add component that component will be of course camera and let's make sure that it's aiming at our player so let's put it right here and you can see that I have to rotate it. I could rotate it in uh, the editor this time around, but I prefer to do it in the blueprint. With uh, small projects like this, it's usually easier to do like that. Because you have only one instance of that. All right, and you can click on that and see that it sort of works. Now, we of course want to set it up that our, that our game knows that it will use this camera. So let's go into event graph and add and get here uh, our player controller. So get player controller right here. And from here, we want to set camera view target with blend. That's cool. Want to do it on event begin play right from the start. Blend set to zero or oh, blend time zero right here. And new view target, a new view target. That's actually very weird, but you have to just set it to self. It took me a long time to figure this one out. It's really strange. So click on play, and you can see that now you can control your player, and your camera stays on one place, which is very good because that means we are using this origin, this new camera. But we of course want our camera to be followed by the player. So let's go back into camera BP and find here our event kick. Because we, what we will do is to take our camera and set its location so set world location and again split that split structure pin connect it after event kick that's cool and what you want to do is to leave x and y as it is because we don't want him to move along x and y axis we want to move him only up and down with the player so take your camera get world location split structure pin and connect your x and y and now we of course need to get z or z that doesn't really matter because we will take our get player pawn let me know in comments if you use z or z i, I don't really no but whatever just let me know <laughs> uh, from our get player pawn or we have to use character maybe let's try to use pawn it should work and we will get uh, actor location get actor now oh, come on <laughs> location uh, split structure pane and connect our z let's see if it works and look at that our camera is moving but only on a left only on up and down left and right and the other and the last one x and y um, what am i telling basically x and y doesn't move z moves i don't know why i'm trying to explain it like i'm three years old anyway that's cool so that works fine but let's also change it to, to uh, 2d i don't want to really have uh, it in perspective let's switch projection mode to orthographic and i believe it should actually save some performance i haven't but i haven't measured it so don't take my word for that that much and that looks fine but we need to increase ortho with let's try 150 uh, 505 jesus just you have seen that number 1500 god damn it and I would say that it works pretty fine. Look at that. It looks like an actual game. Who would have guessed? <laughs> so what we can do is actually change material of these desks. It's kind of pissing me off how they look. So what we will do is to create a... Oh, you know what? No, let's not do it in blueprints. Let's click on content and create a new folder. Materials. Do -do. Ma new material. Right click new material and call it uh, just a color. Just a color underscore mat probably not best name for material but we, it will have to do and we will use it just as a base anyway so let's put here constant vector free constant right click convert it to parameter call it color or color up to you connect it to our base color and by default let's leave it into something whitish compile and what we also want to do is to create another constant uh, connect it to metallic let's do 0 0.7 control c control v 0 0.3 on roughness let's see uh, it's maybe a bit too rough 
Let's let's. Uh, I'm and I'm not sure which one should I use. Uh, one or zero. I always mess these two up. Uh, oh yeah, let's do 0 0.75 on roughness. So roughness 0 0.75, metallic 0 0.7, color is a parameter, so we will set it up later. Apply. And now what you can simply do is to right click on your material, create material instance, call it red underscore material and just double click on it and click on your color and set it to red. This is a very inexpensive way to create simple materials for mobile games or basically for anything. It's uh, really cheap for a processor and for performance. So right click, create material and let's do, let's do a blue one, blue underscore mat. You should probably call it material instance, but who cares? No one is gonna tell me what I'm supposed to do with my materials. Deal with it, bro. <laughs> All right, save it, come save all. Let's go into content, side scroll, BP, uh, blueprints and set it to our wall. Do, do, cube is fine. Maybe I would increase that Z as I decreased before. Let's set it to 0 0.4 and set your basic material to blue underscore mat. All right, guys, well, after applying new materials, I find here a weird bug that uh, my next piece of map wasn't spawning. Uh, to be honest, I have absolutely no idea why that happens. It's incredibly weird. Never happened to me before, but I have found a quick fix. You need to change this code for next level map uh, from here in uh, map BP. We have after our component begin overlap on the next map collision. Originally, I had here two ones, but that for some reason just didn't work anymore after changing materials weird but it just happened but what you can simply do here is to put here something else we can destroy component which will work pretty much same and we want to destroy component next map collision like this file and just to make sure i have it visible in the game so if i click on play you can see that it always deletes itself and spawns new one so that is that it's it's incredibly weird. I don't know why that bug happened, but it just did. <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway, that's fixed then. So the next thing I wanted to do is that we will want to teleport our player when he's on side of the screen, if as you can as you can see in regular doodle jump. Because right now, if I go on the side of the screen, my player will go somewhere to hell, which is quite unpleasant. So what I will do is to go back in our in mine, not yours, mine, not ours, <laughs> map BP, and create here a few new collisions. That collision should be just a collision, so box collision, and let's put it on the side right here. And how high it should be is basically so it covers everything from start of that uh, to end of that. So let's move the, let's scale it up and move it something like that. Right now I would set it visible for a bit, just something like that. Compile and see how it looks in the game. Uh, maybe I would put it a bit more on the left side and it's overlapping, which I don't necessarily want. So let's scale it down, something like that and move it to the left side let's see i would think that something like that should work oh it's still overlapping a bit scale it down and maybe a bit more on the side yeah something like that you should test this on your phone of course Right now, if I jump through that, nothing will happen, which is good. That's exactly what we want. We also want to have it on the other side. So let's duplicate it. Uh, let's uh, rename it, of course, firstly. So left one will be left underscore teleport collision. And the right one will be, as you would guess, right underscore teleport collision. Alright, if you want to set its location, let's look at left, it's about 750, so I will have to set it to minus 750, I believe. Let's see in the game. I can see it, so it's, we have to move it a bit closer. That's just because it's not centered, if I had the player on 0, 0, 0 coordinates, which means I would have also our map on 0, 0 coordinates, it would work better. But this, this looks fine. So the next thing I will want to do is to take our arrows and actually use them for something. So let's 
move them on about the center of the screen. And even actually, you know what? Actually, it doesn't matter. I want to use these parts of them. But let's put them right in front of these collisions. Make sure that they are not overlapping. Maybe a bit more on the center side. Yeah, something like that. Look in the game. Ah, oh, that looks fine. Because now what I will want to do is when our player overlaps this collision, I want to teleport him to position of this arrow on uh, X axis, I think it's X. Now it's Y. And if it overlaps this, I want to teleport him on this side. So it will look like he is going from one screen, on one side of the screen to other side of the screen, but he will be actually teleporting. So uh, let's rename it arrow underscore left and other arrow underscore right. So now on our left teleport collision, we want to do is to on component begin overlap. Again, cast to side scroller character. Connect it adractor. And what you want to do is to set actor location. And we also want to partly have that location, so get actor location. And let's split it. Let's split those pins. And as I said, we will set only Y and leave X and Z. So X and Z stays like this. And this is teleport left. We will then use arrow right. So let's get world location. I think that we are using world. If you get just actor here, we have to. And then connect Y. And click on teleport, I think. Should be fine. Let's see. To do. Ah, look at that. That looks cool. We'll probably have to work on positioning a bit, but it looks pretty well. So let's copy that and do that on the other side. So scroll this thing down a bit. And what you want to do is to right teleport. Oh, yeah, this is left. So let's right teleport. On component begin overlap. Copy all that. And again, uh, to do. Connect this thing and this thing which means pin and actor. I shouldn't use think, I know. And our arrow right, let's switch to arrow left, uh, arrow left because we are using right teleport. And maybe let's play with these uh, positions a bit. Let's put this bit more on the left, this thing more on the right, but make sure that it's not overlapping. Otherwise you would have endless loop of overlapping collisions and teleporting, which would end very badly. Something like that, let's see. Yeah, let me jump through and look at that, that looked actually pretty good. Let's see if it works on the other side. And seems like it works pretty well. We have forever jumping endless map where we can teleport from one side of the screen to other side. I would say that we are on pretty good start. <laughs> All right, so now let's also set it up that our player can actually die. And we will use very similar system that we used with our walls. If you look at your wall BP, we have here our system for checking velocity and we will do completely the same thing, but we will change the threshold, which means it, he, if he is falling fast enough, that means he is falling for some time because you have to have fast, um, higher velocity, which means you are falling faster, then you need to fall for longer. Than, yeah, I got kind of messed up in that. Anyway, we need to have that threshold a bit much lower. I hope that you understand. <laughs> All right, let's compile and we will do that in uh, map PP. Let's just add here another collision. So collision, let's call it that underscore collision because I love to be dramatic when I can. Scroll that thing down and scale it up. Something like that. Yep. Oh, maybe let's make it a bit bigger. And you can see that in the, oh, okay, you can see that right here, doesn't really matter. Uh, what we want to do is on component begin overlap. Let's just copy that from our wall BP, open wall, uh, control C, control V, we want to delete all that and connect it right here. Actor. And let's set it to Right now it's good to check it just to see what works best. I think that when I was testing it, it was about one minus 2000 is pretty much where you want to be for falling. I mean, 
but I would recommend you to put the velocity on tick and just find value that works best. It's always best to find it yourself. So let's delete all this and remember we have it on false. So on false I want to let's just uh, print it. So I will put here, oh, come on. I will put here just quick for loop. Let's do one to nine times. Oh, oh geez, not a 90 times, nine times. And print here string that. All right, let's see. All right, everything is cool. He's jumping, sometimes falling, etc. etc. And it should be most of the time out of the screen. But if I let him actually fall, come on, somewhere here. Yeah, you can see that it triggered our event of fall of uh, death, which is good. It means he has to fall for some time before it will trigger it. If there is plenty of these collisions, but it will trigger it only when he has velocity low enough. In this case, it's low enough. Well, it's high in uh, negative, but that's what we call low, I guess. Depends what numbers you are using. Jeez, I'm chatty today. <laughs> All right, let's add here a few more bonuses. So let's say that uh, spring that can jump you much higher than you would usually and also some enemies. So I will do that by again using map. I think I will duplicate it map underscore two underscore BP. Let's open that and let's see what we can do here. Well, first of all, I will somewhat change it. Let's say to something like that. So the player always knows it's something different. And I want to create another wall. So wall BP, let's duplicate it and do same thing. Wall underscore two underscore BP. Let's open that and we'll change its color. This time it hopefully won't create any bug. Let's call it red, red material. And let's also add here something, something that sort of looks like a spring. I don't have any models, but you know, let's let's do just something that I won't be ashamed of too much. So I should have here uh, da, 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 cylinder. Let's put here just a cylinder. I, I'm changing my mind. I'm actually really ashamed of what I just did. It looks really bad. Anyway, let's uh, disable collision. We don't want any collisions here. And what we want to do is to simply change it to to do velocity to three thousand. Right. Let's just test it to have it here. It should launch us much higher. So if you force on that, it should launch him. Hell yeah, look at that. It jumped, it jumped, launched him much higher, which is cool. That's exactly what we want. Maybe I would add that uh, even 4,000. So there you have a spring. But the next thing we also want to enter. Oh, come on. Sorry. Let's delete this thing. Save all. And let's put it in our map to BP. Our child actor, and let's change it to wall to BP. All right, that's cool. So now we also need to set it up that sometimes it will spawn it. And let's go into edit map BP. In regular map BP, what we want is to look here and uh, let's move everything away a bit. And what we want to do is to promote this to variable. Then delete it and save everything because it Unreal really likes to crash. Uh, <laughs> Unreal really likes to crash when I do something like that. Probably just doesn't like that. Let's rename it to list of walls. List of <laughs> that's really stupid list of maps. And okay, let's deselect this thing just so it doesn't have that much of a problem with uh, compiling. Then click on this icon and switch it to array. Compile. Oh, look at that. It worked. And what you want to do is to get list of maps, get a copy. And we want to have a cop a random in, come on, a random integer in range. And that range will be zero to, let's do two for now. Because what I will do is click on our list of maps and add here three different elements. You have to use three because you start with zero, which me, uh, that's why I said maximum to two. That means actually you have three different numbers which we can choose from. And first one will be wall one. Second one will be wall two. And third second, <laughs> all right, third one, which means second one will be wall just BP. That means he is uh, about 66% likely that he will choose wall BP and about 33% likely that he will choose wall two. All right, I hope that you didn't make same mistake as me. You cannot use here, of course, wall, you have to use map. So map uh, zero, map uh, zero and map two. 
it's I, I know I'm sorry it's it's my fault yeah so now if I click on play and try to play it you can see that mostly I have these blue ones maps with regular tiles or walls but but if I will play for long enough here you go you can see that I have here another spring which launches me much higher hell yeah and I have just noticed that our collision for triggering next map is kind of short. It's possible that if you will go through this, you won't trigger it. So let's make sure that it's higher. Something like that. Yeah, just precautions to be sure. All right. And let's also add here some enemies or something like that. So in blueprints right here, we can let's just duplicate it because we will use same system again. And let's call it enemy underscore BP. Let's take that cube and change it to, I don't know, something that looks dangerous. So, so for example, I don't know, this ball seems dangerous. Yeah, look at that. Look how dangerous it looks. All right, let's set it to default. And just to make it more interesting, let's add here a few da -da -da, cones on sides. So something like that. Yeah, something like that. And let's also make sure that it looks that it's like a really dangerous so add here scene and move everything under it. And let's use event tick and on tick let's let's just rotate it. So add rotation, add local rotation, and I think that we should use to do let's see. X we should use Y. So to do, do, do Y, let's try one. Put it in the game just what it looks like. So show me if you rotate, it should. Yeah, but we will let it rotate a bit faster. Let's do 10. It will be like crazy fast, but that's fine. And what we want to do here is if a player is jumping on that, we want to destroy it. So destroy actor and then we want to launch character. Wait, no, 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 no. My bad, my bad, my bad. It was fine. <laughs> it was all fine. And this is fine. We just need to then destroy the actor. And if you are jumping, which means you are going from there, from the side, we will want to set it to end of the game. And we don't have event for that, so let's create one inside scroll character. Let's put here custom event and call it dead. Uh, let's call it so uh, cast to side scroller character, get player character right here. And we want to call that event, which is dead. And now just to make sure that we know that it happened, let's print string that. And we want to of course sometimes add it to the game. So let's take map 02 or map 2, duplicate it, call it map 3. And we will want to change our child actor 1 to wall 1. And our child actor 2 to our enemy. Enemy BP, yeah, something like that. Look at that, that will be cool. So cool. And now, of course, let's go into map pp and add it to our list of maps. So compile plus and add here map now oh, map zero three. If I jump in from the down, it should uh, tell me that that happened. Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. That happened. <laughs> so let's change it uh, back as it was. And what let's, let's do only three. So it's thirty three percent chance that something happened happens so map map zero two and map three because every time you spawn map zero two or map zero two uh, um, every time you spawn map zero two or the map zero three it will always follow with map and for a map you can get any of these three so we should be good with just this but if you want you can of course add much more variety to your game and add here so many more interesting stuff so let's do something with that the end of the game. First of all, I think that I had it in falling. So, oh, do, do, do. right here I have on component that collision. I have here just that. So I want to cast, oh, actually I already am casting to side scroll character. So let's just call out that. And you of course have to do it with every single of these maps. So map zero three, same thing. Oh, oh, actually it's in false, not in true. So I have to change it. And map 02, again, to do, scroll down, somewhere here, yep. After false, so let's uh, control V, call our dead from side, scroll character and connect it to false. 
All right, so now let's get into that function. And what we will do is to create a super simple hut. So blueprint, so user interface, widget blueprint, game over underscore hut. Let's open that. And I'm not sure if you can even change this to screen. Oh yeah, phones to do Samsung Galaxy S. Okay, but there must be a way to switch it to, oh, there you go, landscape, nice. Oh, portrait. Uh, let's add here text, put it on the center, set position X and Y to 0, 0, X, X, leave like that. And font, let's scale up. Okay, that's way too much. Something, oh, come on, mate. <laughs> let's take it and put it somewhere here. Set it to game over. All right. And because we all know that game over is bad, let's set it to red color because that's what Disney taught us. If it's red, it's bad. Nice. And where is it? I was forgot. Yeah, color and opacity. Set it to red. Cool. So what you want to do is on your in your player side scroll character on that. You probably don't want to set this anymore. You want to come on create widget. Set that widget, of course, to our game over hat. Add to viewport. And then after delay, let's set one second. Okay, that's way too much. Uh, 0 0.3 second. Set it to restart the game. So get current level name. And then you want to open level by name. Connect it and compile and let's see if it all works so it's cute everything works let's try to fall into that game over look at that that was way too fast let's put here longer delay edit side scroll and uh, let's set it to 0 0.5 and you know what let's add here some blur it looks cool uh, so background blur Set anchor to the last one, two, 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 everything to zeros. Set that blur to something like that. And yeah, I would usually add here some animation or whatever. I am not gonna do it now. You can do it yourself. I've made plenty of tutorials for that, so feel free to do that, or you can Google it in like three seconds. If you are slow. <laughs> right, let's try to fall down now. Game over. We got it guys. We are pretty much done. Let's do one more thing. Uh, I want to somehow start the game, of course, and that's by jumping. Right now it's on a spacebar, but I want to now switch it everything to that inputs the motion state. So let me see if I can do that. So we'll set here event tick, and before that, let's put here branch, promote variable, set that condition to should game start. And by default, it should be false. Uh, but once, uh, once it is true, I want to add movement component and work with that, with our motion state rotation. But before all that, I want to, of course, enable it by jumping. So I can do that here after and put touch, uh, after jump. I don't want to stop jumping like ever. So I will just set here a start jump to true. Uh, so after you put your finger on the screen, you touch it, it will enable gyroscope so you can control your rotation with gyroscope and it should also jump to your first first location. Maybe it's not a bad idea to have here first few walls just to let the player like, jump to those first locations. Yeah, something like that. Then he should be able to control it by himself. Right now I'm going to build it on my phone and see if, if everything works, then show it to you. And if that's it, that's it. All right, I have found just a small detail in side scroll character. Right here when you multiply it, I originally had it to minus 100 and, thought, and this y axis to minus one. I set it to all to plus, plus one and plus 100. It seems to work better.
But that's about it. Everything else works very well on the phone. Somewhere here you hopefully have a screen recording of the game. And hey, that's about it. I hope that you learned something. If you did, let me know in comments. And press the like button, as all the YouTubers are supposed to say. And hey, that's about it. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. Surfancy out.